Ari Shafir, the no hose barred comedian. I'm sure some of you guys are aware of who listens to my podcast. So he does this thing mostly every time a celebrity dies where he runs to Twitter and tries to make the most harshest, the most cutting, and hopefully the most funniest joke observation of the day, right? And the whole point of it, I don't really know. I think the point of it is to kind of relieve grief, I'm assuming, because I hear a lot of comedians say whenever someone in a comedy world dies, which is different from obviously a civilian or different from a sportsman or an athlete or a public figure because, you know, they're not involved in that world. But whenever a comedian dies and they go to their wake, there's always a, there's always a, there's always occasion that happens when the f- actual friends of the community who grew up with him or her go up on stage and you know weep their eyes out and talk about you know times that they remember them growing up and moments and stuff. But there's also an occasion when comedians actually go up on stage and the first thing they want to do is make everyone laugh to kind of release the tension. So that's where maybe it's coming from. And, and, I, and I imagine too one part of the process of grieving, you know, to go through the denial stage, the depression stage, the all that thing. There might be a stage in grieving where because again, I've been fortunate where none, no one really close to me has passed away. The last real celebrity that really kind of caught me off guard was probably XXX and as you know, corny as that may sound, because I followed, I was following his career from SoundCloud all the way. Um, who else really, really hurt me? I can't really think. Yeah, not really many to be honest, and I've been lucky with my family too. But I would imagine humor might play a part in the grieving process, so I can, I can see that a lot of it. But for me personally. I never got the whole running on Twitter to make a real dark joke. I didn't really why see that way that was funny. But again, I'm not going to be the one of the people to say, oh, I don't want them to say that thing. I think everyone should be allowed to say what they want to say. But they should they should also be um, willing and accepting of the consequences of, of, of what they say. That's part of the reason why I think counterculture exists. Because I think for the most part, there was, there was no repercussions for anyone, especially people that were in power. It feels like it, right? Now it's been muddled and it turned into some other thing. But I think there was there was, there, there never was a repercussion because as soon as you attain a certain level, a stature, a certain monetary value in your account, it seems as if the law didn't, didn't apply to you, right? Same, same, way, same way we could say like Prince Andrew was photographed hanging around with, you know, um, what's his name? Uh, whatever his name, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, right? And he's just wandering around, you know, not caring in the world. He's not being subpoenaed. He's not being pulled in for questioning. And that's it. They just be able to get away. And I imagine if you were hanging around and there was pictures of you, you know, being in a house of a known sex offender, right? Just me and you, right? Just hanging out, having a good time. Do you think the police just let us just carry on our daily, day, daily lives? Probably not. So maybe Me Too came out of that kind of frustration that these men were sexually taking advantage of the power dynamic inside of the entertainment industry which is already messed up as it is because you know there's the gatekeeper thing so people are coming into it already with their guard down already willing and able to kind of do anything and everything to achieve their dreams and those guys are taking advantage of it right instead of kind of doing the honorable thing and saying hey man what the fuck are you doing like put your top back on this is a serious meeting i don't i don't need to do that nonsense right or just being the kind of what's what they call them being the ally right they women need some guys took advantage so maybe there is that part of it, right? Kind of culture. So anyway, he makes this really mad joke on Twitter. It doesn't really go too far. But then the thing that really kind of really got Ari in hot bubble was this video he put out on Instagram that he immediately, I think, deleted soon after, which I don't really have that much respect for. I think if you're going to be edgy, if you're going to be the dark lord of humor, you should just commit to it all the way through. That's the only thing that, I, again, I don't find it funny. It's not my kind of humor. But if you're going to be that guy, just live with it. But I guess, you know, someone within his immediate circle someone that whose opinion he kind of trusts and respects told him that hey are you need to kind of take that thing off and he ended up doing it so let me just quickly get up on you so you he guys said that with a smile oh, face it's it. not this one that's the odd one where is it there we go here so this is the video right someone posted it on the old um interweb so let's quickly get up on here boom let's see what you guys as i know there's always a lot of like hate pain in the world and it's always a bunch of terrible stories. And every once in a while, there's a good story. <laughs> a good story comes out. You know, it's funny. If you listen to his podcast, you know just what he's doing here. He does this all the time. It's his kind of, what do they call it? A misdirection that he does a lot. He's really good at it, right? The dark misdirection. And again, it's a real shame this has happened because I'm a big fan of Ari Shafir's. I love his um, Skeptic Tank podcast. I love his appearances on other podcasts. I think the fact that he's so like, like spectrum-y, right? There's a little bit of touch of Asperger's about him. Makes him funnier. The fact that he genuinely gives zero fucks as well makes him more funnier. And again, a lot of people say they don't give a fuck. Like, you know, one that comes to mind is Joe Biden. 
he for someone that doesn't give a fuck he does go on a lot about his feelings right so i don't really think he gives he, i don't think he, he, he gives more of a damn than he lets on but i get the feeling Irish Shafir will generally you know be happy to do stand-up comedy in front of a kind of fire for the rest of his life if you got paid he doesn't really care so um this is a shame it's happening but again he did it to himself so again you have to fake you have to live, live with the consequences what it is isn't it the guy who got away with rape <laughs> got his today that's aggressive Kobe Bryant is a god. I'm here in Charlotte, the home of the team that originally drafted him. Uh, maybe he wouldn't have raped that chicken Denver if he had been if he had stayed in Charlotte with the Hornets. But anyway, and again, that's aggressive, right? So again, I don't know nothing about basketball. I'm assuming Kobe Bryant used to play for this this team, right, back in the day, and now he happens to be there, and he's just going off on Kobe about these supposed rape allegations. And again, it's a really bad taste, right? Again, let's just say as a human being, is in bad taste. It's, it's a bit crass. It's a makes you feel a bit yucky. And um, yeah, I don't find it funny. But again, he should have the right to say what he wants, but he should also be able to face up to the consequences. Now, he says this, right? And of course, social media goes crazy. And the thing that was immediately cutting to me, the thing that really kind of hurt me watching this was like, oh, I immediately thought about his friends. I immediately thought about his agent. I immediately thought about his manager. I immediately thought about his family, his girlfriend, all these people who were going to be negatively affected by his just... Um, impulsive kind of carefree I don't give a fuck attitude because I think it's fine when you're alone when you're literally like there's no one else in your family alive or no immediate family that can suffer the consequences of your actions I think it's fine fly off the seat of your pants you know what I mean do your thing but when you have people depending on you an agent a manager a booking agent, or whatever they are a team who kind of support a family on your talent on you know what I mean through the, the the works the kind of the gifts that you've been bestowed upon you they are also kind of leveraging their harness on you too, helping you out so that you can help them out with some money to make their family life a bit easier or to kind of allow them to follow their dreams. And then you're jeopardizing it all just for a joke. It's like, oh, especially a joke like this. Like if you're going to die on the hill, you, you don't, is this the hill you want to die on? The LeBron J, the, sorry, the, the Kobe Bryant has passed away hill. Is this the one you want to go for? Especially in LA. Now, I don't know nothing about basketball. Again, don't, don't tell me to, don't, don't ask me to, describe the rules to you or n name a club outside of chicago la lakers and brooklyn nets don't know any right but from the outside in kobe bryant seemed like a bigger than life character he didn't even seem like an athlete he seemed like a cultural icon right not even to people in la or people on the west coast to the entire united states right if you follow sports you know who kobe is and even outside of sports especially now with all the work he's doing philanthropy the charities he's setting up the academy like, I've known more about Kobe these last few years than I knew about him in basketball because he's doing stuff that kind of seeps into my world, right? Self-improvement, actualization, goal setting, um, all these things I'm kind of interested in. He's kind of infiltrated it because, of course, he kind of lives and breathes it, right? He is the black member after all. So I got the feeling straight away that maybe this wasn't a good idea to do, especially because he's been hanging around in LA quite often, Ari, it feels like. Again, he hasn't moved there, I don't think. I remember him talking about being in New York still and trying to get a studio for his podcast, but it seems like he's been spending a lot of time in LA. And of course, he's part of the Joe Rogan inner sanctum. So there is part of that. It's like, for how finicky and how um, up their own ass Hollywood elites are, especially that kind of liberal group, you have to be really aware of what you're doing when you're kind of like going at them. You have to be aware that, okay, cool. If I do this thing, it's going to fuck up every kind of deal I have in place for the next 18 months. That's what happens for the most part. And then unfortunately, because the entertainment industry is so fickle, by the time you come back after 18 months, they've moved on to somebody else and you become ice cold, right? So I kind of thought it's not the smartest thing to do if you're an LA adjacent comment, comic. If Of course, if you, li if you live in New York, you can kind of come in, flame throw the place and go back to New York and no one will care. For the most part, I would imagine, especially if you're doing the smaller rooms, but if you're trying to be an LA comic or you're trying to infiltrate that scene and you're trying to get deals off the back of that scene, because I'm sure he had a special in mind that supposedly has been canned or put on ice. All these dates that he had coming up have been cancelled. He's got a, supposedly, I read on the internet, he has a police um, security detail outside of his house. His uh, father's address got doxxed, who happens to be a Holocaust survivor who's like 90 years old or something. So again, look at the damage that one action, this one video has caused to people who aren't even involved in your silly little games, right? So that's the thing I have with it. But the problem I have with it the most, right, is the fact that other comedians are going at him. That's the disgusting thing. I think there has to be a brotherhood. There has to be a support system in place where, again, if you don't, if you don't agree with what he said as a joke, cool, just don't say nothing. 
But the fact that comedians are eating their own and trying to align themselves with kind of like the mainstream media elites or the journalists and try and be like all woke and stuff is nasty and quite disgusting because sooner rather than later, they're going to come for you, right? They, they, it's like they, it, it eats its own tail, that whole council culture stuff. It doesn't, it, there is no line. There is no, no one's out of bounds. No one is kind of like above reproach. Like you will get thrown under the bus too. So, and the only people that will, that will help you out or that will hold, hold you up it's going to be the comedians, right? It will be similar to like Jeremy Piven. Imagine if Jeremy Piven came out and started trashing Ari Shafir, right? That would be the height of hypocrisy because the reason why he's got a career now is because comedians don't really give a fuck what you do outside of comedy, right? If anything, they, they think it's going to add to your actual appeal on stage. You're going to be a more interesting person because you have this real life situation that you've kind of gone through or you went through. But if for, for, for Jeremy Piven to kind of suddenly say, oh, I'm going to kick Ari Shafir while he's down, and line myself with these guys is nonsense because sooner rather than later they're gonna I know if another allegation, another email is gonna come out, another tweet, and you're gonna be right back where you started from. So you have to really it's not even a term of like know where your brother's bread is buttered, but you have to really be kind of cognitive or aware of who your actual friends are in the industry. Again, it's hard to do because the industry is kind of flaky by nature, but you have to know where people are actually supporting you and people are not supporting you. But then I I don't know, I guess if you're Michael Rappaport part of your shtick is kind of looking into a camera like that with your fucking you know face full of zits and stuff and shouting and if you're god if you're godfrey i would imagine you're not really part of that comedy scene really you're kind of there but not really you know what i mean you just happen to live in new york so that might be a thing so i don't know i don't know and i always think i feel that the black comics in new york are a little bit separate from the other comedy scenes it's a very weird scene in america isn't it there's a black comic scene and a white comic scene they don't really seem to overlap. Or the the black com the black comics that white people think are funny in, in America don't necessarily overlap into the white black side. Maybe apart from Dave Chappelle. I can't really think of many um, that have kind of done it the other way around. But again, unfortunate situation. I think it's Friday now. It probably will die down by the weekend. Um, again, the most people I'm mostly sorry about or like kind of like bummed out about are the people around Ari, his team, who are going to be out of a paycheck, who are going to be missing some money at the end of the month, which is annoying. Um and of course, for him, he's on personal safety. But again, he's going to have to just, he's got, he's, he's a big boy. He's going to have to pull up his trousers, isn't it? He knows what the deal is, isn't it? You say that kind of stuff. And I guess if he happens to go to, I don't know, man, if this is even real, though. Will he actually go out and someone will actually punch him in the face because they don't like what he said about a sports person they look up to? Maybe, maybe not. But you can't really take that risk, right? A comedy club doesn't have the best security in the world. They're just people just walk in with anything on them. So there is a possibility of something really fucked up happening. So that is a possibility. So I guess him keeping his head down, locking his Twitter, um, turning off the comments on his Instagram is probably a good way to kind of quell all the outrage and then kind of pop up later on. But he put out a half-baked apology, which is probably not an apology on his way. I'm sure Ari doesn't care. He's not sorry. But I'm sure his friends and family are like, hey, Ari, we need you to kind of like fess up and, you know, at least kind of do us a solid on this one. So he's probably done it just for the sake of keeping the peace. But yeah, unfortunate situation for all, all involved. Hopefully it gets sorted out. Hopefully... Um, we see a return of Ari Shafir. But again, the you know, the, the counterculture thing is annoying, man. It really is annoying. Like again, if he does if he's something you don't like and you don't want to be a part of, just I don't know, cuss him out on the comments. Say something mean. I don't know. Why are you trying to seek out his agents and cause that's what people do when someone says something um untowards or something that they don't like. They'll go and start at in their agency, at in the comedy clubs they're going to perform at, calling up the comedy clubs uh fake bomb threats all this stuff so that you can get quote unquote cancelled in the me in the kind of interim it's just not a fun thing to do man but anyway what can you do i'm sure he'll bounce back but interesting to hear what joe rogan will say about it so far my best um the best kind of take on it has been probably um chris the crystalia he said look this is how he is but i just don't get that kind of humor and i don't get it either um the worst takes have been probably brendan shaw and brian callen saying that it really hurt their feelings and shit that was you know a little bit pathetic but you know, we all kind of fall on different lines. It's either you fall on the Brendan Shaw, Brian Callum finger, how your feelings, or you're like Fear of All and Crystal Lee, you don't really care, but you're like, I would never do that. And that's where I kind of fall. But spare a thought for Brad Williams, right? How happy he must be now. Brad, Brad, comedian Brad Williams must be over the moon that Arisha Fear did this. And also, um, Penny for Leanne Kreischer's thoughts. I wonder what she thinks about this whole situation because she hates Arisha Fear's guts. So she must be absolutely reveling in the fact that he's... Um, by his own admission, kind of ruined his own career in the interim again. In the interim, because I'm sure in the end he'd be 